at 18 or 21 when I was just out of college and um, the world was mine to conquer, then I get drafted. I served in Vietnam, came back, fought in the war. And I had had a counselor describe PTSD as an issue. The military took away my invincible spirit. And it, it was gone because you're expendable. You're, you're only body count when you're in the military. So that began it, the process coming back from Vietnam when everybody despised what I had done, though I hadn't done anything except you know, stand up for my country. And that became more difficult. And then other factors in my life, industries that I work within and other things traumatized me. But I sublimated them. The way I put it, I steeled myself against emotions or I just became rock hard. So I haven't literally, hadn't literally cried in 50 years. And the Dr. Joe experience has opened a window to my emotions, which is just remarkable. And I'm able to understand better and I'm able to experience them because when you harden yourselves, you harden yourself against not only the sadness in your life, but also the joy, the love, all the emotional scales that exist you just don't want to be involved. So I basically was out of that part of my life. The other consequence of my life is I was born and raised a Catholic. So I was born a sinner. And that was very difficult to overcome. So when I began with Dr. Joe and he introduced the concept of the unified field, I, when I achieved that, was able to go back into my life and beyond, since there's no time or space, I went back to the cross and I had a prayer that the um, uh, water of Christ's side wets out my stains. So he allowed me to go back in through the quantified field to the cross and the, uh, I, I was underneath the cross and the water came down and it cleansed me of all that burden I had for all those years. And that's when it began. And I opened my heart and my mind to the potential of what could happen and just that was one burden uh, there were other burdens that existed for me life sometimes takes away your innocence and it takes away your integrity and it you, when i lost that i lost who i was and then i've been wandering throughout my whole existence without emotion without the sense of any self-worth because i was lost in this horrible world of my own creation, because you're just, we create it for ourselves, though other people may sometimes manipulate it. We're the creator, we are the participant, we are the acknowledger of what happened. I moved from Texas to Arizona in June on the 25th. On July 1st, I went to a um, counselor to try to identify some of the issues. And she said, there's codependency involved. So I read the books. And I studied this, I do things intellectually. So I figure if I know all this, then I'm able to um, get well quicker. And then she said, no, you're a codependent the rest of your life. So to me, that was a death sentence to say, I'm going to be a codependent forever. So I came to this conference and I sat down with uh, Jace and I said, Jace, I have a dilemma. I am finding healing. I'm finding a change and a transformation and a transition in who I was. And, but however, when I go back to my environment, they're expecting a codependent to come back who has to acknowledge that codependency every day of the rest of their life. And he says, you gotta change. You gotta do something different. So the morning medication yesterday did not benefit me. The guy beside me who's a soccer player from Holland and I, you know, we both were, trying hard, but you, we just couldn't get there. So we come back and then the noon meditation, um, there's a, a woman named Claudette and then the soccer player. And then we said, well, let's make a commitment to this one. And I did. And I was able to achieve a, a release of everything in the sense that it builds up. It's been a burden to me forever and I was never willing to do it. But because I had the, the strength and energy of youth on one side of me, and I didn't realize it was happening this way, and the greatness of love on the other side, someone who just met, who cared for me so much, that I was able to 
I, I dealt with every single trauma individually while lying in the medication and I released tears. It's not something that I had experienced in my life. So it was phenomenal. And I found the sense of the ability to release so much of this that's built up from 50 years worth of, 50 years worth of confusion, bewilderment. And the way I sensed it is through him, when I found this change, he found confidence didn't matter what my next decision was, I found the confidence within myself that it was going to happen. I found, again, my innocence because it was a new life. I found my integrity, and I found my commitment to a future that was going to be better. And then I also found the strength and the courage to say, as I go back into my world, I'm going to be what he's helped me to become, not become a participant, because that's all codependency is, is everybody saying who we are and we're trying to get better. I'm, get, I'm better, and that's the remarkable thing. And as a, uh, the way I survived the first, the last 50, I write poetry, mm -hmm. and my emotions, I couldn't cry or laugh or do anything, I write a poem for a person. So I write poems for, as my mother died, my father died, my sister would die. I didn't have tears, I had a poem. And I shared that with a family and everybody was appreciative. And, but it's better to cry. And, and I just didn't have that within the sense of me. But now I do. And then I go on this walking meditation today. And it's guided, but you never know where you're going to stop. You only stop when he says. So I'm walking down along the pathway. and. He's saying, well, it's time to stop and close your eyes and move over there. And then as I turned and stopped, I'm looking across the river. There's the mountain, straight across. And in my imaging yesterday, I saw this strange sunrise. And it turned out that the sunrise, where he stopped me, was behind a bridge and a reflection off a building. And it was only there for this instant. It wasn't a long time. And it, it was what was there yesterday, which is just a manifestation of something I had seen where it came. And I didn't even know what it was yesterday. But today I could see the bridge and I could see the reflection and then the mountain there. And just that there's something different happening. And then I was joyful. And you begin to experience bliss and you begin to experience acceptance. I have serious glaucoma. Since Dr. Joe, I have, I've given my glasses away. I don't even wear glasses. I, and then the other night, um, the first night we were here, my eye was beginning to act up and I get, it fills with these cells and I, I lose my vision. And in some instances, my eye fills with blood. It's called glaucoma hyphema and I can't see at all and I have to go hours or days before I can see again. Well, on Monday, the pressure released. I didn't have the problem anymore. Just, I say, <laughs> I'm just going to go with the flow. I'm not going to worry about it. And these are things that happened instantaneously. I'm 72, and I have, I want to live to 100, and I now have that opportunity. You know, see, and that's, it, it's the benefit you get from understanding this and, and accepting it, and then choosing to make it a part of your life. It's, you got to choose to become part of what we're giving, but it's nothing that we couldn't be do on our own, but we just don't have the guide. We don't have the resources. And we have a, a society that it's, it's so negative and, and it, he, he teaches love and consideration and warmth and friendship and it's just something that we all need to listen to and to become part of. And then the world will be a better place.